Okay, so today's stuff is Daf Sadik Gimel. I'm at Daf Sadik Gimel. It learned for Achim to call Beis Yisrael and Asuna about Sar Veshivya. Says the Mishnah from <clears throat> the first Mishnah on the page. This is a Mishnah that we discussed yesterday. It was on Daf Sadik Beis and the Beis. This, uh, this most of this Mishnah, almost all of it was on was, was already in yesterday's Daf. Kotei Sadam Ayde Asmo. A person can stipulate on behalf of himself with the owner of the field that he will work and he'll get additional pay in lieu of food. Similarly, he can also stipulate for his elder, uh, for his uh, of age children, because they can also be mochel. They can be mochel the food in lieu of, uh, in lieu of getting more uh, paycheck. We said yesterday, like instead of a $20 minimum wage, which Mickey told me yesterday is the current minimum wage in California. Uh, 25. Mickey said it's 20. Okay, whatever. So they want $30 instead, and they won't eat. So I they bring up the Akhtanam by day Abdo, we should collect them also for Dom because they can be Mocha. I they Ishto for his wife. And they she ish and dust. They have dust. They can be Mocha. They can say, okay, fine, we'll take a higher wage and less and no food. But he can't be Mocha for his children. His children are not capable of being Mocha. Uh, they can't be mochel anything. Uh, you know, they're not, they're not, uh, they're not considered b'nei das. They have to have a ship cost of time, not for their uh, underage. But I'm also, it can't be mochel that. And yesterday we had a discussion about, well, are we speaking of where they're feeding them or where they're not feeding them? It depends on how you hold. Do you, do you have to feed them or not? Rabbi you don't have to feed them. Still, you cannot, uh, why can't you uh, stipulate for them? Because he said that's the machlokas, because it's do you hold it's Misha Lohu Ochel, therefore you could stipulate, or do you hold it's Mena Shemayim, that they're Ochel, and therefore you cannot stipulate. Not certainly for your animal, they shame them does. Certainly the Torah says, Lo Sach Meshor Bedisho, you're not, uh, the, the uh, animal cannot say, okay, I'll take no food, uh, you know, give me more rest time or whatever. Let's say you hire workers to work in Netrabai, something you cannot eat. So there, uh, they're not entitled to eat it. So what do you do there? They can't eat. But if he didn't let them know in advance that you're not going to be able to eat because it's natural the workers just can't look at the field and know if it's natural by or not, or the vineyard in this case. And then as a knas, uh, because it's like mekachtos, we explained yesterday, he has to be poda the natural by food for money, like you do with my sushani, and, eat, and uh, they can eat it, take the money to Shalim, but they can eat the food right there. And the owner would then take the money and... Uh, Purchase food with it in Yishlam. Let's say he had food which had already been prepared, meaning it was already uh, fit for taking Trumas and Maestras. For example, fig cakes that now broke apart, or wine that, uh, that uh, the barrels opened up, and the workers did not know that this is already food that's been processed. And if it's been fully processed, no longer are they capable of eating it, Minatora. They're not entitled to eat it. Uh, so therefore, also they can't eat it because they don't. They're, remember, workers are only entitled to eat. When the time when they when they are uh, harvesting, and if it's already stuff which has been harvested, they can only eat it as long as it hasn't been fully processed yet. So if this is fully processed, they're not entitled to eat it. But if the owner did not tell them that it's been fully processed, then they can reasonably assume that it hasn't been processed yet. It's figs that haven't yet been put into fig cakes or uh, wine that has been fully sealed in a barrel. Therefore, the owner, uh, because the, the workers think they're going to be able to eat, the owner says, might say, oh, no, no, it's already been fully processed, you're not entitled. So therefore, as a knas, because he fooled them, ma'asir, he has to take maaser on it because it's been fully processed. And then he has to give them as a knas. Again, minatora they wouldn't eat, but as a knas, the owner has to give them food. Now we're going to say, to, all this was explained on yesterday's Gemara, pardon yeah. Marriage, yes, but not be mochel the food. But not and as if she's entitled she's entitled to eat if he has to feed if he has a four year old daughter, he's mochayev to feed her. He's also can marry her off against her will. That's true. He can he can call, he could take them from New York and move them to Israel against their will. <laughs> you could do that too. But he can't mochel on her food. Can't mochel on her food. Or as we say yesterday, on her tsar, on her pain. 
she sees food and she can't eat, a little child wants to eat something. Can't be marchal on that. That's what we saw, even on his own children. Yeah, we're at the end of the uh, Mishnah on uh, Tzadakim Olam and Olam. Shomri Paras, the last last phrase in the Mishnah which we're going to deal with today. Shomri Paras, let's say you're a guard for fruits. Ochum Mehilchas Medina Velom Menatora. That they can eat because of the custom of the land. That's the general custom, but it's not Menatora. And we'll see why, because there's, there's two opinions of the Gemara. Are Shomri from like workers or not? So you can understand from the Mishnah the way the Mishnah reads really is like the second sheet, the Shmuel sheet of the Gemara, that a shomer is not a, a shomer who's a guard is not working the field. The Torah says the worker you come if he so comes when you come into your the vineyard of your of your fellow Jew and you're working for him as a, as our our interpretation is that you're working for him. Well, is guarding working or not? Is he considered working or not? That's the machlokes we're going to have right now. Says the Gemara at the beginning of the Gemara right after the Mishnah. Shomer Paris. Amarav. So the Mishnah said that they're entitled to eat, but not really Menatorah. They're not really, into, God didn't allow them to eat automatically if they're in the field, but the minute is that you allow them to eat. So the Gemara says, the Gemara says, Shomer Paris, Amarav. So Rav, Rav and Shmuel is a machlok. So Rav says, Lo Shanel, Shomer Gan is a paradise. And that's only that there's a custom that this that we say that they're allowed to eat only as a custom, but not Menatorah. We're talking about Gan of paradise. We're talking about gardens and orchards. Where he's guarding trees or vines or whatever. He's guarding, let's say, trees, right? So when he's guarding trees, is that the uh, harvesting time? No, not harvesting time. What do we say in the Mishnah back on Pei Zion? Who can eat Minatora? If you're working with Khublakarka Bashaska Marmalach, that means when you're harvesting, or if it's or if it's attached from the ground, but while well, it hasn't been fully processed yet. But uh in this case. Shomriganus of Pardesim, which it's uh, it's fixed land, it's a uh, it's a uh, mechubel uh, karka. You're not uh, harvesting it yet, so if you're guarding it, you can only eat rabbanan. You're not entitled to eat. Shomriganus of Gitas. Let's say you're guarding vats of wine or uh, stocks, piles of food. Ochlin, ochlin Torah. Why? Because that's already been detached from the ground and it hasn't been fully processed yet. Right, you'd say the wine is in the vat, the uh, the the stock of uh, grain is in the field, hasn't been processed yet. They're entitled to eat in Torah. Why? Now, why is that? You're still only a guard. Ksava, Rob holds Mashamer Kosamaisa dummy. If you're guarding, it's like you're working. Guarding is also working. Working is not just pulling stuff out of the ground, hoeing, uh, pruning, doing whatever you do. It's also guarding. Guarding is like that too. That's Rav Shita. So Rav says when the mission says that Shomri Pirs Ochum Milchum Dina Vomana Torah, we're speaking about um Mukhubur. If it's Mukhub and you're not and you're not, it's not that you're not harvesting it, so that you're not entitled to Minatora, but Rabbi, you are. But if you're guarding piles of wheat or wine that's already been detached from the ground and that's not fully, fully processed yet, then you're then you're uh, entitled to Minatora because guarding is like working. Shmuel says no. Lo shanel shem gives is just the opposite. When the mission says that you eat mid meaning as a minig, that's only if you're talking about stuff which is detached from the ground. Why? Why? So if it's detached from the ground, not fully processed, why aren't you allowed to be Torah? Because Shmuel holds that a shomer is not like a worker. You know, shomer is not entitled to anything. Not entitled to anything. And okay, mid if he's if he's guarding uh, uh, piles of uh, of wheat. Or uh, or or a vat uh, that's considered work. Uh, so therefore, shomigitus uh, varimos. Those things are detached, but guarding is not considered work. But merabanim will allow you to eat it. I will shomigitus for If you're guarding mechuber lekarka, you're guarding trees. You don't have to eat it at all because why? Because because of mishamad lavkos and ma'isadami. Shmuel holds guarding is not doing anything. You're not you're not considered working. So if it's uh trees which are not harvesting, you're not entitled to eat minatory, you're not entitled to eat the Oh, if it's detached stuff, when the mission says show me paris ocha, mission says the last line of the mission, show me paris ocha milchs medina below minatora. What is it that's rabbanan? If it's piles of wheat that's out in the field that you've already cut down, or or uh, wine in the bed, mid you could do that. But if it's 
attached to the ground and you're just guarding it, you're not entitled to eat anything at all. So that's the machlokus over here. Is guarding like a misa or not? When the mission says that you guard payros, you're not really entitled to Torah, but you're entitled to Rabbanan. According to Rav, that guarding is like working. So why are you only high, why are you why are you only entitled to Rabbanan? Because we're speaking about trees and pardesim, which are attached to the ground. So therefore, you're not entitled to eat Torah, but you're entitled to eat Rabbanan. But if you're talking about dummy, it's detached from the ground and not fully processed yet, you can even eat Menatora because he holds that guarding is considered like, like work. Shmuel says, no, oh, that's not work. That's not work at all. So if it's if it's attached to the ground, you're not entitled to anything. Even Menatora, there's no meaning for that either. If it's not attached to the ground and guarding is not really working, but Menatora, Menatora, Medina is that you're allowed to. The minute is, the custom is that you can eat. Muslim Ravach of our Afuna, we're asking you cash. Right, right. But is it considered work in the Torah? Yeah, you're paying somebody to do it. But for example, let's say you're paying a guard $25 an hour, but you're paying a worker out in the field $50 an hour because he's doing more work. Guarding is a lot simpler than actually working. One way to look at it, right? Um, but in either case, it makes a difference what they're, even if they're paid the same thing. Is guarding considered work that you're entitled to eat or not? In other words, it could be that when you're out in the field, maybe the Torah's the philosophy is, is that when you're out in the field and you're cutting something, you obviously have an idea. You know, you'd like to taste something. You're out, you're out there, or you're right. You're you're working with this produce out in the field. You're hoeing. You're you're gathering. You're winnowing. You're you know whatever you're doing, but you're working with it. So you want to take a bite. But if you're just guarding it, you're just you're just there to stand there and guard it. You're not necessarily have to. You know. That's right. You're working also. Right. Right. You can stand there. Right. 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 Masar of Achabar Afuna. So yes, Akasha now on Shmuel Shita. You say that working is uh, that Shomer is not working. Masar of Achabar Afuna. Hamishamer Sapora. Let's say you're guarding the Paraduma. You know, the Paraduma had to be guarded. Make sure that nobody worked with it. Right. If you could work with it, it became possible. So you're guarding it. Metame Bugadam. Your clothes are tame. Just like a person who worked, all the Kohanim who work with the Paraduma, their Rach is that their 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 tummy, their clothes are tummy. But here he says, even the guard is this tummy. If you say that guarding is not like working, you're right. You're right. The truth is that guarding is not like working. And Minatora, you're not your clothes are in tummy. But the Rav Ron said your clothes are tummy because Xera, maybe you'll move the limb of the animal. You might cause it to move a little bit, and therefore you might touch it, and you'll be oh, and you'll become tummy that way. So that's what he says. That Xera Rabbanu the Gazral Tumah Vlad Mera. It's not really Minatar. Moser got another kash. Hamishamar Arba B'Chamesh B'Kshos. Let's say you're guarding four or five different cucumber beds of four or five different people. There's five owners. Let's say they all have cucumber beds in this area. You're guarding all Maresa Lo Yamali Kreis of Mechman. You shouldn't eat just from one of them, right? You're guarding all five. You shouldn't just say, I'll eat, oh, I'll, fill, I'll fill myself up from this one. I'm not going to eat from the other ones. You should eat from each one of them proportionally. Maybe you're saying that what? That guarding is not like doing my sadami. Why can't you eat it all? You're just guarding. It says over here, if you're guarding four or five cucumber beds of four or five different people, you should eat from each one of them proportionally. Don't eat all from one person. It's not fair. Or why are you entitled to eat it all? If if uh, if Bishamar is not like an Osamaisa, it's that it's like you're doing something. We're talking about where they've been detached from the ground already. So it's more akuran. If they're detached, should we have a miser? If, as we said, if they're detached from the ground, why do you say you're eating from each one? If you're only entitled to eat from, eat from detached stuff as long as it hasn't been finished for miser, the food is not fully processed yet. But if it's fully processed, you're not entitled to eat. That's a shalom nitto pikish lomer. Speaking about it, it's not fully processed because the blossoms, the little flowers that attach to them, were not were not uh, detached yet. They hadn't fallen off. Omar Bashi. So we have this machlok between Rav and Shmuel. Rav says that guarding is working. Guarding is working. And therefore, if you guarded uh, detached produce, which has not been fully processed, you're even high if uh, you're entitled to eat Torah. When the Mishnah says Rabbana, it's speaking about something which is um, when you're guarding uh Lakarka, which when you're not harvesting it, so Minatari, you're not entitled to eat. But Rabbana, you can, or admitted you can. But Shmuel says, no, 
if it's mechubal karka, you can't eat it at all. Not b'raisa, not b'rabbanan, because because you're not working at all. Uh, however, if you're guarding detached stuff, even though you're not working, the Chum said you're allowed to eat. Amar Bashi, Kavaz Eir Shmuel Masav. It's Masav like Shmuel. Why? It's not the mission that we had back on Pei Zayin. Said as follows: Eiloch Minat Torah. Look at those words. Masav. The Tanan. The Eiloch Minat Torah. Also, Mechubal Karka B'Shas Kamar Melacha. If you're harvesting, if you're working with Mechubal Karka when you're harvesting and when you're finishing it, Uvetolish and Vetolish. If it's been detached from the ground, right? Uvetolish. Before the work has been fully processed. Okay. And it has to be something attached to the ground. You can't, you're not entitled that you're milking a cow or you're not entitled to drink the milk. He says, these things eat menatora. If you also, before, all right. These are the ones that eat menatora. It's mashma that the other ones don't eat menatora, right? The other things. Mashma mechlal di kid lokach menatora el milchus madoni. You only talk to eat as a minig. Aim is safe, but then the mission goes on. The elu she'ein ochel. That's exactly the next words of the mission. Elu she'ein ochel. Followings do not eat. What he says do not eat. Ein shalach my ein ochel. What does it mean ein ochel? Ilim she'ein ochel menatora. That's the same menatora. It says elu she'ein ochel. Doesn't mean ein ochel menatora el milchus madina. It's a high ratio. That's what we talk about. The first part. The first part of the mission says the following things eat menatora, but not. Uh, right, Rangs Menatora, Tosh Mekar, Shalom Nachto, Mashma, that what? That there are some things which don't eat Menatora, Elmi Midrabana. So, what's the Sefer telling me? Elu Sheinoch. What does it mean? Einoch and Menatora, Elmi Midrabana, or Milfus Medina? What does that mean? My Einoch, Elaim Sheinoch, Menatora, Elmi Medina. I know Rasha. That's what we deduce from the first part of the Mishnah. Elu Lav Sheinoch, Menatora, Elmi Midrabana, Elmi Medina. Means that I can't eat it all. My new. When you're working, when you're working right? When you're working where there's no gemara and there you're not entitled to eat minat Torah because it's not you're not harvesting now. But and certainly if you're guarding, uh, you're guarding trees. When you're guarding trees, you're not doing guarding is certainly not even considered work. So there you're certainly not entitled to eat at all. That's what he means. Mind you, it's not Elu Shein Ochel Menatora, but Menatora, because that is what we talk about. That's that we already mentioned what those are. What is that? That's like the Mishnah said. The Mishnah said Shomer Peris Ochel Ochel Mils. What what are we talking about? If you're guarding detached food, guarding is not work. But if it's detached, the Rabbi said you can eat. But when the Mishnah says Elu Shein Ochel, what is Menatora? No Menatora, but also Dina. What is that? If you're Mechubal Karka. When b'shas b'shas ain't gemar melacha, you're not a talti at all. Not b'raisa and rabbanan. That's like Shmuel and Kolshke and Shomer Gedus and Bradesos. Why? Because they're not even working. Also, mechuvah lekarka b'shas ain't gemar melacha. If you're working, let's say you're hoeing a tree or whatever, you're pruning it around there, but it's not gemar melacha. You're not a talti at all. And certainly guarding, because guarding is not work at all. So this mission is mashma more like Shmuel. Because the Mishnah says Elusha ain't Ochlin, and Ochlin ain't Ochlin presume means Lo Benatar Melchus Medina. According to Rav, you can always eat at least Melchus Medina, but according to Shmuel, Os Mechubal Karka does not eat at all, and that fits in with the safe of the Mishnah. Avar says the Mishnah, the second Mishnah on the page. Avar Shomer, and there's four kinds of Shomer. We've learned this in other places in Shas, many places. Avar Shomer, Shomer Chinim and Shomer Nas Sacher Sacher. What are they? Uh, a bailey, a worker, a, a guard. Or a depositee, or whatever, whatever you want to call him, the person who's agreed to guard something for no pay. Show is a person who borrows. No sasach is a person who's a hired, a hired guard. And a sofa is a person who rents. Now, a renter sounds like the different renter, he's paying the owner. But still, a sofa has aloch, as we'll see, like a shomer sofa. Shomachinim Mishbalka, Shomachinim just has to swear that he hasn't been, that he wasn't negligent. And whatever happened to the item, if he wasn't negligent, he is potter. A show Mashalm is a call. A show is responsible for everything. We'll see there's some exceptions, but basically he's responsible even for accidents. No se socher ba socher. What about a no se socher is the same as shomer socher? And he takes a, he takes a salary for uh, a payment for guarding and a renter. Nishbon they can swear for accidents, like it broke down, it was captured, or la mesa, it died. Naturally, they're part of that. <coughs> <coughs> but they pay for Gnev and Aveda. 
that's the rule for Shomer Sacher. In other words, the Shomer Sacher cannot swear that it was stolen and get off the hook. He's high for Ganei Beda. Because he's paid, he has to perform a higher level of, of uh, watchmanship, of guarding, uh, bringing more security. Those are the basic rules. Mantana Arba Shomer. Who's what? A Shoel? Yeah, the Shoel was the second one. Arba Shomer, Shomer came in Bahash Shoel. And we said that the Shoel pays for everything, but there is an exception. If it's Mesa Machmas Balacha, if I borrow your cow, and as soon as I take it out to plow, it dies because it can't handle the work, then I'm not responsible for that because I borrowed it, the understanding that I'm going to do work with it. Or if I borrow your car and it dies as soon as I turn the car on, I'm not responsible for it because that's why I borrowed the car to drive. So Mesa Machmas, we'll see Mesa Machmas Balacha, he's high one, but if it just had an animal, had a heart attack or whatever, some other uh, an accident happened if you got the car, you're responsible for that if you're the show. Mantan Abraham, who's the one who learns that there are four different kinds of shomim? Amar Nachman Ravua Rav Meir goes to Gemir. Amar Lei Rava the Rav Nachman's Rav says to Rav Nachman, you say me Ika the less Lei Arba Shomim. Is there anybody who doesn't hold over shomim? You say a Mishnah that holds us four different kinds of shomim goes to Gemir. What do you mean? Is there any argument about that? Is there anybody who says that there aren't four kinds? Amar Yochi Kamina Mantan Ash. So here, I don't mean who says there's four as opposed to three or five. I meant to say, who is the author that says that a soher, that a renter, a person who rents something, or like a tenant who rents something from somebody else, that he has a loch like a shomer soher? It's her mayor. He, her mayor holds that. Others disagree. You disagree. I have a mayor if kashamila. We have a mayor doesn't hold that. The tenant learns soher case from How does the soher pay? Her mayor on the chinam. Mary says, like a Shemachina, not like a Shemar Sacher. Shemachina is Potter and Gnevin of Eidus, only Chayef Am Shia. Rabbi Yudah, like a Shemar Sacher. So, how can you say that a mayor is the one who holds that a Shomer, uh, that a uh, that is, that a uh, Soker pays like a Shemar Sacher? This price says, uh, the price says that Soker, how does he pay? Rameir says, like a Shemachina, Rabbi Yudah says, like a Shemar Sacher. The answer is, Rabbi Barab, Rabbi Barabu, Ipratani. Rabbi will learn the other way around. Rav Nachman said, Omar Rav Nachman, Omar Rav Avu, Rav Avu said, Rav Meir is the one who holds that, that a Socher is like a Shomer Socher, even though that Brisa holds differently, that Rav Meir is the one who said that a Socher is like a Shomer Chinam. Rav Avu learned the Mishnah the other way, learned the Brisa the other way around, or he had those sheets different, different than this Brisa. He holds that what? That Rav Meir is the one who says that a Socher is like a Shomer Socher, and Rav Yudah is the one who says it's a Shomer Chinam. Iyachi, so the Gemara says, okay, there's your Iyachi Arba, Shloshin in if that's the case, there's really only three. There's a Shomer Chinam, there's a Shomer Sacher, and that would include a Socher also, who pays like Shomer Sacher, and there's a Shoel. There's only really three different ones. There's three different kinds of Shomer. One is a Shomer Chinam works for nothing. One is a borrower who doesn't pay anything. One is a Shomer Sacher who's paid. And then there's a Socher who has a halacha like a Shomer Sacher. According to Rabbi Yudah, where Rabbi Ulan is, Rabbi Yudah uh, holds that it's like Shemachina, but there's still only three halachas. There's either one halacha that you're potter and you're only chayav on Gnev, and you're only chayav on Shia, and if you swear that you were in Poshia, you're potter. There's halacha that you're only chayav on Gnev and Aveda, and on Shia, of course, uh, even on Gnev and Aveda, and not on Onsen. That would be the second level of Shomer Sacher. According to Rabbi Meir, Sacher would be like that too. And then there's a third level of Shoal. There's only, there's three different kinds of halachas, but there's four different definitions of what a Shomer is, a Shomer Chinam, a Shomer Socher, a Socher, and a Shoel. Now we have a story where we see that Rabbah was very makel when it comes to the work of the sh of the uh, Shomer Socher. A uh, there, uh, there was a shepherd. Now what is a shepherd? A shepherd is a Shomer Socher. He's paid, right? You hire a shepherd. People don't shepherd for free. So Ahu Reya Davika Roy Chiusa, he was guarding. He was a shepherd. He was guarding. He was shepherding uh, some animals on behalf of the owner, Aguda Denar Papa, on the bank of the river Papa. That was the name of the river. So one of the animals slipped off the bank. Benafla uh, Lamai fell into the water and died. So the owner took uh, the shepherd to a Din Torah, as they always do, uh, to see if he is responsible. Patsre, Rabba, who was, we'll see, was very makel. Others disagree. Rabba was very makel. He says, no, you're off the hook. Uh, it was an accident. Amr, my friend, what could he have done? The animal was uh, slipped, slipped and fell. That was an accident. It wasn't his fault. He guarded it like anybody else would guard it. You took the animals to graze on some grass near the riverbank. 
and he, the, the animal slipped and fell. It's not your fault. I don't understand. You're saying you guard like like normal guards. What happens if this would have happened? What happens? All the must have been the dilution. What happens if, let's say, every day the the um, uh, the workers uh, broke for lunch and for uh, they took lunch every day for an hour from twelve to one o'clock. And what happens? And at that point, they went into the city to eat at a restaurant and they left the animals out in the field. What would you say there? All the all must be the dialo in she. How can I? Would you say he's also part of that? In other words, he was off his guard for an hour for lunch, but everybody does that. He's right. That's what everybody, they're entitled to eat lunch. So what are you supposed to do when they're eating lunch? They had a brown bag it out in the field? No, they're entitled to go into the city and eat lunch. Okay, this is, that's Rav Vashita. He's very makeable when it comes to the to the, to the shepherds. Gana, Porta, Beidna, the Gana, what happens if he took a little siesta there? Took a little nap. They usually nap from 1 to 1.15, right? After lunch. They needed a nap. Uh, uh, would you say also that he's putter there too? I'm like, hey, yeah, that's the custom. The shepherds all went to lunch from 12 to 1, and from 1 to 1 15, they took a little nap. And if something happened to the animal then, he did his regular guard. He's a shamer sucker. Pardon? Well, you call it negligence. Well, we're going to see some machlokas. Others disagree. Others say that that's negligent. But Rabba felt that that's the custom, no problem. Ace fake. Pardon? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Ain't. Yeah. That's what Rabba Shita that the that the Shomer Zacher felt. Ace fake. Another kasha on Rabba. Eloim owns the Shomer Zacher part of What are the accidents? Remember, so the Shomer Zacher is chayvan ganei, but if Eddie's part or an onsen, what are the onsen that he's that he's part on the land? Going like a pasuk in Hebrew says like this: Vatipel Shava Shava fell on them on these uh, slaves. Vatikachem and he and he took them. He took them away like he captured and kidnapped them. Besan Aram Hiku Lefichareb and he he slaughtered all the uh, the, uh, the the servants over there. In other words, he captured the people and he slaughtered the servants. That's an accident. That's an accident. You call this an accident? You call taking a siesta when everybody else does, or taking breaking for lunch? You call that an accident? That you say the Shomer Sachas Potter. Shomer Sachas Potter means it's an accident. This is an accident. An accident is when when people come and capture you. October seventh for the people in Oslo. That was an accident. It wasn't their fault. That's different. Over there, we're speaking about where do you say that? That's why is that considered an accident? And anything less than that's not an accident. You know, that it, it's, it's not an accident. They were talking about the city guards, the city watchmen that have a higher degree of responsibility. If you're guarding the city, you know, you're from, from renting it from uh, enemies, then you know, can't break for lunch or for siesta. But uh, uh, we're talking about a regular guard, a regular shepherd. He's entitled to take his lunch hour and take his break. How far, how much is a shomer sacher chayev to to uh, how how far is he responsible to guard that uh, that other that up until that point he's responsible and uh, beyond that it's an accident. Ad kedei uh, until the stage that Yaakov Avinu said to Lavan Heisi Bayom during the day Achalani Chorev I was consumed I was uh, destroyed by the drought the Kerch Balayla and the frost at night as I worked for these animals day and night. Uh, that's considered. That's how far Shomer Sacher has to do. He's responsible even for that. Beyond that, that's an accident. But you have to really work hard. I worked in the, in the heat of the day and the frost of the night. That's how far you have to go. So what do you see? How can you say that you're allowed to take a break and that's you know, that's still considered fulfilling your duties? And if an animal, something happened to an animal while you were at lunch, your putter, Amalei Sarab answered. They are also were speaking about. Watchman who had a higher degree of responsibility. What are you saying? That Yaakov was the city guard. We're talking about Yaakov I'm Damale Lavan. Tell Lavan. Not to I guarded this a few. The Tirusi is I I I was. I gave you an extra security, a higher degree of of security. Kachazim was just like city watchmen, like city guards. In other words, he said, "Listen, I wasn't like a a regular shomer sacher. Doesn't have to go that far. I could just take take a break when I want to." But I did extra good, extra duty, and what did I get? You tried to cheat me uh, every time. Let's say a, gar, a shepherd was shepherding his flock, and uh, he left the flock. Ubali came to the city. 
came to the city for lunch. Buzz Avatar, a wolf came and uh, and tore the animal, tore the one of the animals apart. Ubari Vidaris or an Ari claimed and he clawed him, clawed him to death. Rashi says the lion claws him right there. The uh, the wolf, uh, you know, takes him back to his uh, back to his lair or whatever, and and deals with it. Doesn't do it out in the street. What do you say in a case like that? Guy went to lunch. The guard went to lunch, and a zev came and, dest and destroyed the animal, or a lion came. Ain't omen. We don't say We don't say we don't measure. We don't say. Well, had he been there, he could have saved him, and therefore the guard is responsible. Ella omdenoso. We assess him. We say im Had he not left the the uh, guard, had not left his station, he could have saved the animals. Then he's chayiv because he's responsible. Im lav. If he couldn't have saved him anyway, then he's Potter. But the point is, had he, since he left his station, had he been had he been there and he could have saved them, he's Chayim. So you don't say he's entitled to my love. He went for his regular lunch hour like everybody else is low. That's what I'm saying. I'll be the low entry. He went to a place of time when he's not entitled to go. When everybody went to lunch, yeah, that would be okay. But here he went uh, on his own. He wasn't supposed to leave his station at that point. And he left on his own. Therefore, had he been able to save them, he would have been chayim. So why is he putter even if he couldn't save them? Why? Initially, this was a negligence because you left your station. You weren't entirely. Even though at the end, animals came that he couldn't have prevented them anyway. That's called chilasa b'shia. Originally, it was negligence. And later on, it turned out it was an onis because a lion came and ate the animals. But we say in a case of chilasa b'shia b'savonis, we passed him before, you're chayim. So in this case, he's mechayim too. So what's the difference? If an animal came and he couldn't have prevented it, uh, a lion came and he could have prevented it. Since it was the beginning, the, since he left the station when he shouldn't have left it, that means he was he was negligent. The answer is no. He didn't leave the station negligently. The Shama Kolari he, he heard the lion coming. He heard the lion's roar, so he ran away. That's what happened. He was trying to save his life. So what do you mean you uh, estimate? What do you mean you assess him? Had he been able to have a lemebet? If a lion came, you assess had he been able to fend the animal off. He couldn't have fended him off. He was a lion. He should have. He should have gathered a posse of other shepherds and sticks and try to and try to keep the animals away. That's what he should have done. So therefore, it's a shia. It's not. It's not shia. But he was scared. But he should have done something. But the point is. So why is he? Why is he chayev? The answer is. Had he been able to fend off the wild animals uh, by getting other shepherds or getting sticks and getting some weapons, uh, then he's off the hook. But he had he not been able, I mean, that, then had he been able to, then he's responsible. Had he not been able to, then he's off the hook. So if that's the case, why are you talking about a, a shepherd? I feel nami. Even a shemachinim also, who's capable of fending them off. Domari, I guess he was speaking of Rabbah, who he's been having this discussion with. The, right, this is all a dialogue between, uh, right, b between um, uh, no, he's talking about this story. Uh, Abaya, Abaya asked him this question. Abaya said to his teacher Rebbe, uh, to his teacher Rabba, he calls uh, Abaya calls his master, his teacher uh, Mar. He says, if you yourself said, if a Shemachinim could have fended off the attackers. By uh, employing other shepherds or whatever, getting sticks for lokidim, he's chayv. It's also considered negligence. Not even a not even a, a hired shepherd, even a shemachinim. It's a shemachinim, a chinim. Shemachinim is only responsible to do it if he can get it for free. If it didn't cost anything, he couldn't. He didn't have to pay anything. Shemachar b'schar. Shemachar is responsible even to pay other people to employ other people as a posse to fend off the animals. So vad kama, how much does he have to spend? demand as much as the animals are worth. The animals are worth a thousand dollars. He's got to spend a thousand dollars on hiring other agents or other people to uh, to defend uh, to defend the herd, to defend their, their flock. So who says that Shemachinim is high of an accident uh, that he's high of nonsense, meaning that he as an accident he's responsible to pay out of his own pocket to fend off an owner, to fend off these wild animals. Why would he have to do that? He doesn't pay out of his own pocket. He's just responsible. His responsibility is to guard. He's paid to guard. He's If an accident is coming and he could prevent it by paying other workers, paying other people to help defend him, he should do that. Of course, he doesn't have to pay it out of his own pocket. He'll get reimbursed from the owner. Okay. How much does he have to spend? As much as the herd is worth. 
What did he gain? <laughs> if let's say the, the he's responsible to guard a herd of uh, that's worth a thousand dollars, he's supposed to spend a thousand dollars on other guards to prevent it. Well, if he spends a thousand dollars, what did he what did he save the owner? The owner lost his, his lost a thousand dollars anyway, so he might as well just have lost the herd. Now, the differences the difference is that the owner would rather have his own animals, the animals they had before, because they're already fit. They have uh, uh, they've already uh, they have uh, they've already been uh, you know uh, he's used to them already. They know him. Uh, he's uh, he's been they've been working for him for a long time. Rashi says. Um, Rashi says. Uh, he recognized them. They're already trained in his house. That's a better word. So they've already been trained. He'd rather, in other words, he'd rather spend, even though he, he's spending a thousand dollars to save his animals, why don't you say lose the animals? You got to spend a thousand dollars buy new animals. The answer is these have already been trained. He, he knows them already. So they're more fit. He doesn't have to go buy new ones. He'd rather just you know have the ones that he had. So all this was describing why Rabba, Rabba was defending himself and says that as long as you guard the way you normally guard, you're not responsible for anymore. Why over here do we say that he's responsible if he left his station? Because he left at a time, uh, even he, he didn't just the some leave at a time. In the hurry, he's, uh, he, he said that if he left out of negligence, even if it was an accident afterwards, he'd be responsible. Here he didn't leave out of negligence. It wasn't actually negligence. He heard the lion, but he should have hired other people and tried to save it. If he could have hired other people and saved it, he's responsible. If he couldn't have, then he's not responsible. Now, we said that's all Rabbah, who was made of this rabbi. These two rabbis, low sphere, low how to rabbi. They don't all of Rabbah said. They said, listen, that, you know, if you even if you went out to lunch, when everybody goes out to lunch, or you went out to uh, siesta or whatever, uh, you're chayim, right? Love Rabbah. Amula, because they, they say that's why I give you agrets. That's why I paid you. Then through the tourists, say I paid you in order to have a good. I could have hired anybody watchman for only want to do it for free, if they would have done it for free. I paid you to guard these animals. Don't tell me you went out to lunch. You should have brown bagged it out in the field. Barada Sabala. There's a story with Barada. That was his name. He was the porter. Havikam Aber Chiyusa Agamla Narish. He was taking. He was transporting animals for for an owner. And he took him on the river, on the um, on the bridge of Narish. Narish, I guess, was a river there. Took him on that bridge. One of the animals pushed the other animals off the bridge. The shishman fell into the water and died. Also, in a papa. So the owner brought uh, this guy Barada Sabla, you know, porters. He brought them uh, the porter to Rapapa. Chayve um, and Rapapa um, obligated the uh, transporter to pay. Omele, Maivale, what could I have done? One animal will push the animal off. Omele, you should have had him pass single file on the bridge. The problem is you had him go two animals together, so one pushed the other off. You should have had them go single file, and then it wouldn't happen. So you were negligent. Omele, Yadaspe, Babarachsech, the Matzin Lever, Kachadachada. Do you know anybody who can do that? Barachsech means your, your nephew. Um, do you know, like, do you have any of your uh, fellow Jews who could have done that. Like, you know, it's not so simple to do it one by one. The people like, you know, the ones who preceded you, the ones who preceded you have already cried with that excuse. Nobody listen. It's not an excuse. <laughs> you should have, you should have had them pass over the bridge shingle file since you didn't, you're responsible. In other words, <clears throat> even if they were, even if he, even if he wasn't paid, if he was a shamachinim, also that's considered uh, negligence. Ebo, that was his name. Ebo Afget uh, Kisna He he deposited some flax with Runya. Runya was uh, the the depositee, the guard. Ozel Shabo, that was his name. Shabo came Shamtamine. Shabo was a was a crooked robber, <clears throat> and he stole the flax from Runya. He stole Ebo's flax from Runya. The so hooker got up at the end. The got up was found out. They knew who he was. He had, they found him, caught him red-handed. Also, they came around, came around Nachman, Chayve. In other words, they came for Rav Nachman, and Rav Nachman said that uh, Runya, the guard, he had to go uh, get them. He was responsible. They know who they was. It said Shabo's house. Go get it from him. This this is Rav Nachman. The shelf Rav Nachman Rav Nachman. Let's say. 
this stuff was stolen by accident. In other words, it's stolen against your will. And then you found out who the Ganaf was. If it was a Shamachina, we could say, have a Rotsam, which we can either swear that he wasn't negligent, right? It was stolen by accident. It wasn't, uh, it was stolen, and he's not responsible. Or you could say, listen, I was responsible for it. I'll go, I'll go get it from the Ganaf. I'll go uh, knock on his door and I'll try to fight with him. Im Shomer Sacher, if he was paid, Osi Modin, he's got to go after the Ganav. Ben and Ishba. In other words, the Shomer Sacher is put on the Ganav if he doesn't know who the Ganav was. But if he knows who the Ganav was, he's got to go get it from the Ganav. It doesn't swear. He can't get off by swearing. So what do you see over here? That a Shomer Chinam, in this case, Ebo had deposited with Runya. Runya was a Shomer Chinam. And Rapapa, and uh, the Rafun rather, uh, Rav Nachman rather, Rav Nachman said that uh, Runya has to go get it from the Ganav. His responsibility. Or this disagrees with Rafuna Barab, who said if he's a Shamakinim, he has a choice. Either get it from the Ghana or swear that he's not responsible. Amarava, so Khart is a machlokas here, because Rafuna said Rav Nachman said you have no choice. You've got to go get it from the Ghana. Rafuna Barabin says, since you're a Shamakinam, you have a choice. Either swear or go get it from the Ghana. Amarava, no. Hasam Gavri the Parmuska Habakam over there. Speaking in that case, the uh, officers of the of the government were there. The Ramakali had he lifted his voice, they would have saved it. In other words, and normally maybe everybody holds like Rafuna Barabin, that if it was stolen against your will and you're a Shamachinim, you have a choice of either swearing that you're not responsible or going and fighting the Ghana for it. But in this case, he didn't Rav Nachman didn't give the guard that choice. Why? Because he could have screamed when it was taken from him against his will. There were guards there, there were officers, policemen, whatever, and he could have had he screamed something, he could they, he could have present he could have saved it right then and there. The policeman would have come to his aid. Since he didn't do that, he has to go get it from the Ghana once the Ghana is known. Says the next Mishnah, three Mishnah is today. Ze'ev If one wolf comes, you're guarding, let's say, some animals, and a wolf comes, you could have fended him off. What's a wolf? Well, you could have guarded up a wolf, take a stick, and you fight him off. Shnei if there's two, already that's hard. That's considered an accident, and you're not responsible if you're a Shamar Sachar. If it's a time when the animals are running wild. Rashi says that the government, uh, like the king let them all out. The king let the foxes out, you know, they, 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 they are the, uh, the wolves out, uh, you know, they're, they're out, they're running. I, I think it's easy to say running wild, but Rashi says, you know, like the, uh, maybe normally they caught them and now they let them run out. They opened up the gates, uh, the guard, the, uh, wherever the, the pens that they kept these wolves in. So Rav Yudas says, if it's a time when the when the wolves are running wild, even one wild, even one wolf is an onus. It's hard to fend off animals who are running wild. Shnei menos, two dogs. If there's two dogs uh, who are causing the damage, and you couldn't protect your uh, your charge from the two dogs, that's that's uh, you still you, that's your fault. Two dogs is not an onus, right? Right? Because uh, dogs are easier to fend off than wolves. Yadoa Habavli, that was his name, Omer Mishmar Mayor. It's not. It, it's not a. Um, an, uh, it's not an accident. You're responsible if they both came from the same direction. If the two dogs came from two different directions, that's an onus. You couldn't protect them. How list them if they're robbers? That's a, that's an onus. The Gemara will explain that. List them as armed robbers. List them is an onus. That's what we mean. But if it's if it if it's not armed, we'll see that a shemesachah could have fended himself off. Uh, all kinds of wild animals, very strong wild animals like. A ria, a lion, a dove, a bear, a, a, a namer is a, a leopard, a pardalus is a panther, a nachash, a snake. Well, those are onsen because you're not expected to guard against that, even if you're paid. A masai is man and that's only if all these things are only responsible if they came of their own. You didn't instigate this. Let's say you instigated it, you caused this, you went to a place where the animals are running wild. Right, if you you, uh, you you did this on your own, you took them to that place, then you're responsible. Says um, says Gemara, uh, oh, I'm sorry. If you took them to a place where which is which is infested with wild animals or 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 uh, burglars, you know, robbers, then it's not an onus. And as a mission said that a listim is not an onus. We'll see. That's only if it's a if it's a, not an armed robber. Just to a robber, you could offend up if you took them. Took the animals dafka to a place which is infested with wild animals or robbers, then that's not an onus. You're responsible to your shomer sacher. Mesa kadarka. Let's say the animal died on its own. That's an onus. That's an onus. Again, a shower would be high for an onus, but a shomer sacher is potter. 
Sigma for Umesa, let's say you mistreated the animals. You either did you starve the animals or you left them out in the sun or in the cold. Uh Anos, that's not as irresponsible, that's negligence. Also, the Rosh Sika and Minafla raise on us. Let's say an went up to a cliff and fell off. That's an onus. And as if you couldn't prevent it from falling off, you couldn't hold on to the reins or to the uh, leash or whatever, that's on us. Hello, Lord. But if you took it up to the cliff, hello, Rosh Saka Minafla, Mesa, that's on us. That's your fault. In the first case, it went off, went up on its own. You couldn't stop it. Or if even if it went up with you, but you were holding on to it, you couldn't keep the animal from falling. But if you you took up you took up the animal a place where he shouldn't have gone and he fell off, that's not an ones. That's your responsibility. It says more about zebechat ones. We said what one is zebechat ones. You said on our mission that zebechat one wolf is not ones. The mission says here, Bryce says that it is ones. It goes like the second sheet brought down in the Mishnah. Those Rabbiru says that at a time when animals are running wild, then even one wolf is an ones. Halistam erase ones. Am I looking at like, why do you say listen is an ones? Why don't you just say that? Why do you say listen is is an ones? Right? It's a is an accident. You couldn't prevent it. You're an armed guard. Why couldn't you stand up against the robber? I'm a robber. Listen, we talk about he was an armed robber. Boy, what happens if you're both armed? What happens if the armed robber comes against you and the shepherd is also armed? Now, me and Rinuka Gabla Gabra should be an equal match, and therefore you're responsible. The guard is responsible. So, Dilma, hi, Moshe Shem, I'll say. The robber is coming. He doesn't care about his life. He's, he's willing to lose his life. Taking, I mean, he's either going to kill or be killed. He's more, you know, he's more ibrigagaven, right? He's more, uh, uh, in, he's more uh, inclined to. Uh, to give up his life. In other words, he'll he'll be stronger over here. He'll fight stronger because uh, he's willing to give up his life. Whereas the guard says, I can't pay, but I'm not willing to give up my life. So the Morsim of Stafford, the High Muslim of Shea, High Low of Shea. In other words, the guard is not responsible, even though he's an armed guard. If he's an armed, he's a, he's an armed guard, but the list of Muslim is armed, that's still considered an accident because he's not going to give up his life. He's not going to, uh, if, if his life is in danger, he might defend himself, but he's not going to start shooting just to save a few sheep. Let's say he found uh, the uh, let's say the, um, the, the, the guard uh, met, or the shepherd here met uh, these bad guys, these robbers. Gandasar, you disgusting Ganath. You cheat, or you you know you're a bad guy. But just the plan, I'll tell you what. You think you're going to steal my sheep or my my charge or what animals I'm charged with uh, guarding? I'll tell you where we're. I'm, I'm willing to tell you we're stand, We're in this place. We're camped in this particular place. Kach in the spot. Gabri ikabadan. We've got a lot. I'm sorry. Um, yeah, but just the plan is We're 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 encamped in this place. Kach gabri ika. We have so many people with us. We have a lot. Of, we have a big staff here. Badan. We have so many uh, guard dogs with us. In other words, you think you can come and take stuff from us? We are camped over here. I'll tell you where we are. We have a lot of people with us. We have a lot of dogs. We have so many uh, sling shooters assigned with us. They would, you know, people who are uh, shoot the slingshot suits, uh, uh, shoot stones at them. Uh, you think you're going to come and then after, after basically he taunted what happened was the, the shepherd taunted these robbers and said, you think you're going to take our stuff away? We got so many guards. We got so many dogs. We got so many sling shooters. You think uh, the robber came and after he was taunted, came and stole the sheep or the animals, whatever. My, The Mishnah said, if you take him to a place that's infested with animals and robbers, then you're responsible. That's not an accident. Shomer Sachar is high for that. So therefore, he says that's a, you taunted them. You caused them to come, even though you you know you thought you're defending yourself. Well, you 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 caused them to come. You told them exactly where you're camped. Therefore, you're responsible. Tomorrow's daf daf tzadik dalit be on the podcast as usual, and on Sunday merit Hashem we'll pick it up from uh, maybe a little bit earlier. But the daf on tomorrow's daf takes you to the 18th line on daf tzadik hey, where it says Ashkechen lechiyav on the 18th line. Have a good job. Shabbat shalom l'kula. Shown in the south. Are there some here? Oh, really? Yeah, and he once, once he heard some noises while he was there. He thought it was a robber, so he shot. He killed the girl. <laughs> that was it. Did, did they make him pay? <laughs> <laughs>
I called uh, right. Avner. You know, he had knee mm -hmm. surgery. He said, "Well, he sounded okay. At least, you know, he didn't it didn't kill him. You know, he answered his phone. You know, 